All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the Muster Masterclass 1.2. Uh, I think this is the seventh class in the second series. And I am thrilled tonight to talk about a very, very fundamental topic that really is the, the, uh, the linchpin for all of our Muster work. And that is, and that is the trait of will, having willpower. Having willpower and being able to uh, have the the battery, so to speak, that gets things done. I want to start with a story. So there was this Amish boy who went to the mall with his dad for the very first time. It was the first time they were ever in a mall. They've never been to a mall before. And uh, everything they saw was, was exciting, but you know, it was interesting, was intriguing. But there was one thing that was absolutely mind-blowing. It was the silver walls that would open and close. Silver walls that were open and close. Now, what, what they didn't know was that this was an elevator and they had no idea what that was. But they would see these silver walls closing and opening, closing and opening. So they see at one point, a woman wheels up with a wheelchair and she pushes a button by the silver wall and the door is open and she rolls into the silver wall and then the door closes. A minute later, they see the door opening and a young 24-year-old woman walks out. And the, the man says to, the, to his young son, he says, quickly, quickly, get mom. So, you know, we all wish that change were just so easy. <laughs> we wish that you could just go into an elevator, come back out, and it is, you know, this miracle of change. So how does change come about? How do we... Uh, transform ourselves and, and, and really become something special that we want to be. So there is a fundamental trait that's known as in Hebrew as ratzon. Ratzon means willpower or drive or uh, ambition. So let's talk about that. You know, interestingly, as I do before every class, almost, uh, I go to Google and I say, define willpower. So they came up with the following uh, several definitions. I want to read them to you. Strength of will, mind, or determination, self-control, uh, the strength of will to carry out one's decisions, wishes, or plans. Willpower is defa defined as discipline or self and, uh, and self-restraint. An example of willpower is someone being able to quit smoking. Uh, the unwavering strength of will to carry out one's wishes. Okay, so these are several uh, definitions of uh, willpower. But we learned about many, many traits till now. I think we uh, exactly 17 traits or 16 traits till now. And the question is, we learned so much about traits and we learned even techniques and how to attain these traits. But we may have, you may have experienced what I experienced. And that is that sometimes you hit a wall and you realize that, yeah, I may have learned about kindness, but I haven't become Mr. Kindness. So how do I change that and become the person I want to be and what, I've, what we've been learning about? How do I incorporate this and make this into who I am? The answer is, is that if we want to put anything into action, we need willpower. We need the rut zone. Now, we need to explore what is willpower and how to attain it and um, how to use it effectively to strengthen and acquire greatness, right? We see that it's quite, it's actually quite difficult to make real change. The laws of inertia dictate that things will, by and large, stay the way they were until now. So if I'm lazy 
getting out of bed in the morning, I'll probably continue to stay lazy getting out of bed in the morning. Unless you mix in one ingredient, the will. If one has the will, they can overcome anything. If one has the will, the desire, they can overcome anything. So, I want to bring you the Zohar. The Zohar says something amazing. He says it in Aramaic. I'll translate it to, 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 to Hebrew and then to English. Call milim the alma lo italian el biravos biruusa. All things in the world are only dependent on will. All things in this world are de- only dependent on will. In fact, there's a, a statement I could not, I searched today, I spent about eight hours preparing today's class, just today, and um, I couldn't find a source to the following, but it's very, very um, well known, this statement, and that is, Ein davar ha'omed There's nothing that stands in the way of willpower. Nothing. It can overcome anything. Any challenge, any uh, uh, obstacle can be removed and demolished with willpower. You know, it's interesting, the Talmud says, Amar Rabbi Yitzchak, Rabbi Yitzchak says, Im yomer l'chadam, if a man tells you, Yagati v'lomatsati, that I put forward effort and didn't find results, don't believe it. I'll tell him, don't believe it. If someone tells you, I didn't toil, I didn't work hard for something, and I found it, don't believe it. I'll tell me. However, if you toiled and found it, that you can believe. There's no free rides. There's no free rides in this world. If someone achieved something, you can believe that they worked hard for it or that they willed it. They willed that outcome. Someone doesn't just arrive one day at being the world's greatest contractor, the world's greatest artist, the world's greatest uh, musician, or the world's greatest uh, gymnast just by uh, skill. You can ask any athlete. It's 99% willpower, 1% 1% skill. 99% willpower, 1% skill. It's that will, that determination that every single day I'm going to get out of bed and I'm going to go jogging and running and I'm going to, that way I can do my 26.2 miles. It's all determination. You don't need to be skilled at running a marathon. You need to be willed at running a marathon. So, there's a, 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 so much fascinating Torah about willpower that I, I have so much. I have pages here. You look at my desk here. I have pages of notes, and I don't even know where to start. That's the honest truth. The honest truth is that my will to give this class was so great that it's more than my skill to give this class today. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to be all over the place, but that's fine because we're on a journey together, right? So there is one power that has very deep power. It leads to action. It lights up the way. And there's one special gift that comes with this one power. And that is will. And that is its assistance from above. When someone has willpower, they get special assistance from above. And I'm going to bring you uh, a bunch of sources for this. Because I couldn't believe it. I've been saying it for many years, but I couldn't believe it when I saw it. I actually found the source to something I've been saying for years. That when someone wills something, there's special assistance from above that's the Talmud. But it's much more than that. It's much, much more than that. And we'll see in a, in a moment what that means. Now, many people think that will means that I just imagine something or I wish for something. Yeah, we wake up in the morning and we wish that uh, we were a millionaire. Uh, we wish that we won, uh, you know, we, that we, uh, 
that we were successful in our business, uh, we were successful in our relationships. Those are quick wishes that come and go. To will something needs to be deep from within us. True will brings about assistance from above, we mentioned, and it makes it reality. It makes it reality. So let me give you an example with regarding to traits, and then we'll see the sources for this. I want to become a person of kindness. So how do I become a person of kindness? Where do I start? What do I do? I, I just went to a, such an inspiring lecture by Rabbi Walby and the Musser Masterclass. He talked about acts of kindness, becoming a person of kindness. And now I want to transform my life and become a person of kindness. How do I do that? Where do I start? Uh, no acts of kindness right here. So what am I going to do? All right, we'll just keep on going with life and I'll just stay the same person I always was. Unless a person really has the will. If a person has the will, and asks Hashem for it. Hashem, I want to become a person of kindness. Or, take something even simpler. Prayer. Someone wants to become better at prayer. Someone wants to learn Torah. All we need to do is A, have the will for it, and B, ask for it. And we get a special assistance from above, our sages tell us, to accomplish and attain those goals. The, the will creates the ability for it to happen. What a, what a person truly desires, he accomplishes. Now we have to recognize that there's a difference between something that we truly will and something that we it would be nice for it to happen. They're not the same. By the way, the reverse is also true. If you look at what a person accomplished, you can identify their will. When you, when you see Michael Phelps with 25 gold medals, you know what that identifies? That identifies his willpower to attain 25 gold medals. That's what it identifies. It, it, in reverse, it works as well. When someone has accomplished something, you're able to identify what the will was to get there. Momentary inspiration is not will. You go to a lecture, you go to a sermon, you hear a sermon from the rabbi, uh, you go to a uh, one of these seminars. Momentary inspiration does not equal will. Will needs to be someone's drive. It needs to be someone's conviction. I'm got, I got to accomplish this. I've got to make this happen. Wanting to eat or sleep isn't willpower. That's a necessity that we need to fulfill. Okay, so we, we, we need to recognize that. So I want to bring you a piece of Talmud. The Talmud says an amazing thing. The path in which a person wishes to proceed one is led and is assisted. This is tractate Makot. There's another Talmud which says something similar, which says, Haba litaher. Sorry, it says first as follows. Haba litaher misayinoto. Someone who comes to purify himself. He's assisted. Habalitame, someone who comes to defile himself, potrinlo. They open the door for him, but they don't assist him. Heaven doesn't assist someone in doing something bad, in doing something that will defile him. That you need to do yourself. Will doesn't get extra assistance from above to do bad things. 
but you do get extra assistance from above to do good things. So I want to read to you, the Talmud says, the Talmud in Tractate Makot, it brings that in the way, a per, in the path that a person wishes to proceed, he is led and assisted in it. So the Talmud brings a proof from three different sources. Now, I want you to appreciate the following. Our sages teach us that when you have a cross between two different things you are learning, it's a sign from heaven that God is happy with what you're learning. So if you were listening to this class, we talk about willpower, and then tomorrow you go to another class and they talk about willpower, you'll be like, what? That's amazing. What a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. It's God pu putting you on that crossroad to tell you, I like what you're doing. So Hashem is happy with the topic we chose today because the first source that the Talmud brings to back up this idea that the way in which a person desires to go, they assist him. What's the first source? This week's Torah portion. This week's Torah portion, we have the story of Bilam and Balak. And what happened? Bilam is this prophet. And the king Balak is telling him, can you curse the Jewish people? So he says, listen, I, I can't do anything that God doesn't want me to do. Just so that you know. I can't do something that God doesn't want me to do. So I'm going to ask God. And God will tell me, and I'll read you the verses from the, from, from the verses. It's really exceptional. It's really exceptional. So in the book of Numbers, which we're in right now, and in the, in the portion of Balak, which we're going to read this Shabbos, so we see that he's being asked by King Balak, go curse the Jewish people. He says, I have to talk to God. So, so God says to him as follows, who, who are these people with you? He says, these are Balak's people. They asked me to... Uh, to curse uh, the Jewish people. So what does God say? By Yomer Elohim el Bilam, Hashem says to Bilam, Lo Seilechimahim, don't go with them. Lo Saorasam, Ki Baruchu, don't curse the nation because they are blessed. All right, this is chapter 22, verse number 12. Goes back the next morning and he tells them, Balak, I can't do this. God said, I can't. His people, they're blessed. I can't curse them. He says, come on, you got to do this for us. You got to curse these Jewish people. You got to curse them for us. He says, I told you, I can't go against the will of Hashem. But I'll ask him again tonight. I'll have the revelation again tonight, and I will ask the Almighty. And what happens a few verses later? Verse number... Twenty. And the Almighty comes in a vision to Bilam, Lila, in middle of the night. Because these people came and insisted that you go with them, you can go with them. What happened? God just told them the night before, don't go. Don't curse the people. Now God says you can go. You know why? Because that's what he wanted. His desire was to go and do something. And his real desire was to make that money, that whole bunch of money that he was being offered by King Balak. He desired it. God says, you desire something, nothing stands in the way of desire. And the Talmud goes on to bring from the prophets and from the writings that the way in which a person wants to go, he is guided. You want to go? You'll get it. By the way, 
anybody who has a desire for anything that is real and genuine, and it's a deep will, a deep drive, they'll be able to attain it. You know why? Because in heaven, they will allow it to happen. So I want to read to you something. Buckle up. Buckle up. Listen to these words. This is from the Ben Yehoyada, one of the comment, great commentaries on the Talmud. He says the following. And just like Bilam, Dirak b'machshavto, only in his thought, Haya davarzeh. He just thought about it. He just thought, I really want to do it. He didn't say it. Vipasuk melamdecha. This teaches us, Lahoyel yolif mine, al mi shidiber befiv shirot zelelech bederech zeh, velo shahoye b'machshavto bovad. Imagine how great it would be if someone would pronounce the words of their will, of their desire, of their drive to accomplish something and not only keep it in their mind. You want to write a book? Don't keep that thought in your mind. Talk about it. Speak it out. The Ben Yehoyada says that it's unbelievable power that you bring to this world by your desire for something. How does that happen? Listen to this now. The way in which a person desires to go, they guide you there. Not, we didn't say, doesn't say that God will guide him. They guide him. What is they guide him? What is they? Who is they? Listen to this. And this is like we've said in multiple places. Listen to the following words. Because every thought and every word that a person speaks, an action that a person does, he creates with that. The word, the thought, the action, you know what you create with it? Malach lefi inyono. He creates an angel with that will. You've created an angel with your will. If you desire something, if you will it and you talk about it, you think about it and you act upon it, you create an angel. Imlutov, imlara, whether it be for good, desire to do something good, or desire to do something not good. The Al Kain Omar, and therefore it says, the way in the path in which a person wants to go, Sharishus Biyad Ha'adam. God Almighty gives him the ability to do it. Kefi Ritsono Vidato Shal Adam Alikinoso. According to the will and the desire of a person, he's allowed to do it. Who allows him? Hamalachim, the angels that he created. The angels that you've created, they escort you and they guide you and they say, here, you can do it. All you need to do is put out the word. By putting out that word, it creates the angels. Those angels guide and succeed your way. I don't know about you, but I'm mind blown. That's the most unbelievable thing. That means that if you think about it, every single wish that you want, you can attain. If you really, really desire it and you you ask for it, and you utter those words. You will it into creation. How? Our sages tell us here. Because the words that you use, the thoughts that you think create the angels that make it possible for that to happen. This is unreal. 
I want to read to you a little bit further from one of the great Kabbalistic sages, the student of the Arizal, Reb Chaim Vital. He says the following. Ki diburo eno holechinam, because the words that you utter aren't for naught. They don't go to waste. Ki kol hayotzimipiv, everything that comes out of your mouth, yase im tov tov, v'chein lehefech. If it was for good, it'll come out good. And if opposite, it'll be the opposite. Hakol ose roshim lamala, because everything that a person speaks has an impact in the heavenly realms. This is unreal. The power that we have to accomplish greatness is right there. All we need to do is really will it. Have the willpower and say, God, I need your help. I want this. I need this. I want this. I need this. Help me make this happen. Do you know that Rabbi Sral Salanter, the founder of the Muslim movement, he would he was known to say that refining one single trait, one mida, perfecting one trait is more difficult than learning the entire Talmud. 2,711 pages of Talmud is easier than changing one trait. Pretty difficult, but yet we can do it. If someone has a challenge with a trait, anger, what can I do? I get angry. That's the way God made me. If you really desire and will to change that anger, and not only in my heart, it would be ideal that one day I become less angry. No. Will it. You know what happens when you will something? You talk to the Almighty and you ask him, say, Hashem, please remove this anger from my heart. Hashem, remove it from my from my my set of traits. I want to I want to not have anger. Guess what happens? You have the ability to transform yourself with that will. I want to read to you something else now. You want to know what that will is? So we're saying we should will it. Listen even better. I'm reading you now from my grandfather's writings. It's unbelievable. What should that will be? We have a drive for something. What should that will? We're saying, I want to be less angry. I want to be more patient. I want to be more kind. I want to be more forgiving. I want to be more believing. What, how do you will that? Listen to what he says. It's amazing. He says, Shaharatzon yitmale kulo, that the will should be complete, with only one thing. Lihiyot karov, El habore olam, to be close with the Almighty. The only thing we need for will is the desire to be close to the Almighty. That's the desire. Think about that for a second. What does anger do? Anger stays like a barrier between me and the Almighty. Any trait that we have that's a negative trait, what does that do? It creates a barrier between us and the Almighty. How do we will that change? We will that change by saying, Hashem, I want to be closer to you. I want, I will it. I will that closeness to you. That will will bring about all of his strengths of his body and his soul 
Vikulam Yirtamu Lemagamazu, and all of them will combine their energies to accomplish this goal. You want to get rid of anger? Hashem, I want to be close to you. This anger is a, a barrier between me and you. Help me remove it. What happens now? All of the energies of the soul and the body forge together and get the success of removing that anger. It's as if you press a button. What happens when you press that button? Either the engine turns on, the, the, the machine turns on, whatever it is that, it's, that that button is connected to. When a person wants to connect to Hashem, that is the button of success. That is will. To have willpower means I want to connect to the Almighty in the greatest way possible. And I need this removed from, as a barrier. I need this barrier removed so that I can connect on the highest level possible. You know, the Gon of Vilna writes in the commentary on Proverbs, he says, a person's main goal in life is to constantly work on breaking and changing his bad character traits. Because if not for this, what are we living for? Right? So I want to just add, who am I to add on the Gona Vilna? But it's first, it's, that's the second step. The first step is to perfect our positive traits. Our goal is to perfect our traits, bring them to the highest level possible. Take your good traits and strengthen them and say, Hashem, I want to be closer to you. I want to be like you in kindness. Because we, our goal, we mentioned this in the beginning in our introduction, and that is, God blew into man's nostrils a living soul. And what was he called? Adam. He was called man. Our sages teach us, Adam comes from the term Adame, to emulate God. Our deep desire, our deep wish is to be godlike. And that's how we get willpower. We say, Hashem, you know why I need your help with kindness? Because I want to be God-like. I want to be like you. I need your assistance. Help me get there. Raise me up. Lift me up. Give me the tools I need. Give me the opportunities I need to attain that kindness, to be like you. This is the, 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 the underpinning of all Musser work. We need to have this component attached to everything that we try to work on. We, we must invest in our willpower, creating the vessel for success to come our way. So how exactly can we change ourselves for the better, getting rid of bad habits, unhealthy anger, impulsive behavior, impulsive behaviors when change is so hard. That's what our sages tell us, the following. Ein davar ha'omed lufnei haratzon. There is nothing that can stand before a person's will. Nothing. Nothing. I, you know, I'm looking at my notes here, I'm sorry. Any more notes there? Oh, here we go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thomas Edison. On his 2000th experiment, discovered, he didn't invent, because nobody invented anything. Right? We only discover what Hashem put embedded into creation. Right? We don't invent things. 
right? We don't create things. We discover what Hashem is already embedded into creation. Thomas Edison, right, his 2000th project was the light bulb. So they asked him, how do you feel about the 1,999 failures? How does that make you feel? He said it was a 2,000 step process. It was 2,000 steps of willpower. That each time there was a failure, it didn't stop him. It propelled him forward to the next one. Because when you will something, the path will open. You will attain it at the end. There's no one who has success in any area of life without will. You need to will it to bring it into existence. Yagata umatsata tami. You toiled, meaning you willed it, and then you found success. That you can believe. If you don't will it, it's not going to come in. It's not. It's not going to come into existence on its own. So there's still so much to talk about here. It's very interesting that we see. One of the great commentaries says the following. He says, everything is dependent on willpower. It says that um, the Jewish people, Vayetzu, this is Abraham, Vayetzu leches arza Canaan. They were leaving to go to the land of Canaan, and the same verse says Vayavar arza Canaan, and they arrived at the land of Canaan. That was quick, right? People would say En lecha davar omed There's nothing that comes in front of will. When you will something, boom, it happens. See, he says. The desire of a people makes it impossible for them. To, they're unstoppable. I think that one of the great blessings of this great country that we are fortunate to live in is the ability, I think that the, the pursuit of happiness, I think is a mistake. I think the pursuit of will, the pursuit of will, you can pursue what you want. We're not going to get in your way. Which is why there's so much creativity that comes, that's, that's created in this country. You have the ability to dream. You have the ability, there, you're not going to be stopped. That we're going to put as least the least amount of barriers in front of you. So there's a whole nother conversation that needs to be had, and that is how do we deal with if God doesn't want us to attain something? If I desire to become a millionaire, does that mean that I'm going to become a millionaire? What's if God said that, uh, no, that's not on the schedule for you? That's not on the agenda for you. So it's a whole nother conversation. And one that's not in the uh, in the uh, in the scope of tonight's class, but what many times is holding us back is not that the heavens don't want us to have whatever it is that we desire; it's that we don't desire it enough. Life is much more than money. Life is about attaining a great level of perfection within ourselves. And the truth is, is that the only way that we can attain that perfection, it's not going to come by, you know, happenstance. We're not going to one day bump into perfection. We have to desire and will that perfection. 
and have the drive and the push. And if a person doesn't have it, they're not going to be able to attain that perfection. Think of Rabbi Akiva. I don't think it was that Rabbi Akiva didn't try for 40 years. I think he tried for 40 years. And what he learned from that drop of water dropping on the stone and dropping on the stone, what did he learn from it? Is that eventually it penetrated. So he says, ah, even though I tried for 40 years and wasn't successful, if I continue, eventually I will be successful. It wasn't that he was a total ignoramus and he didn't know anything. And he just the first time, oh, what's the Aleph bet? I have no idea what that is. No, it was that he tried to attain wisdom. He tried to, to, to become a person of greatness. And it was far from him. But when he saw those drops, one after another after another, he said, ah, the only thing I need is the desire. If I have the drive, the urge, I have the, the willpower, the, I'm unstoppable. Ah, that's what I need. That's what I'm going to have. Right? Im tirtsu ein zu agada. If you desire it, it's not going to be a problem. Right? Like we say, when there's a will, there's a way. You know why? Because when you will something, you create the way for something. We all are able to create angels with our words. When we desire something, when we want something, we can create the angels that will bring about that will. I've seen many, many times in my life people that talked about, I, I want to do this, I want to go this place, I want to do that, I want to travel here, I want to go there, I want to meet this person. And eventually, they succeeded in all the things they really deeply desired. Because that will, that desire, opens up the channels for it to, to, to for that blessing to come forth. And that's something that each and every one of us, we can bring about. It, we don't have to be someone like, oh, only someone, only a prophet, only a rabbi, only someone, no, you, each and every one of us, me. We can all accomplish great things. We need to be determined. We need to have the will for it. And there's nothing that stands in our way. I want to read you something. It's again in Hebrew, but I'll translate. So, if we want to inspire someone to this willpower, the person needs to know what they really, really will. What do you, what is, what is your willpower really desire? Like we mentioned, there's nothing that stands in the way of someone's will. Da'ato, one of the great sages said, Da'ato shal adam kemo achsanya shal hefker. Someone's mind, someone's intentions is like an open marketplace. Kol misho otze ba'etz lo umitnehe kebalabayit. Whatever comes to your mind, that becomes what you want. Oh, I saw an advertisement for a new, a new uh, game. Now I want the game. I saw an advertisement for a new a, a new uh, barbecue grill. Now I want a new barbecue grill. Right, whatever it is, and a person just gets.
He said, he says, but Tachlit Musar, the essence of Musar, who lead Gabel al Hergelav, Bishelo Yie Libo Kamach Sanya Shel Hefker. You can't allow these quick little advertisements to become your will. You can't. And by the way, I'm not only talking about you know on uh, online or on on in on the, on the television. That I'm not talking. Just things you see. Things. Oh, that must be. If everyone has that, and then I need to have it. And, and people, that's that's making our brain a public domain. No, we have to be the gatekeepers of our desire and our will. We have to be determined. We have to be determined to chart our own path forward. What do I want to accomplish today? Make that list. How am I going to do it? I have no idea. Hashem, I need your help. Help me attain this. And the hope is, is that we'll all be able to, uh, you know, find the success that we need in every area of life with this willpower. Haba litaher misayininoso. When someone comes to purify themselves, to do the right thing, to do the good thing, he gets special assistance from above. We don't open the door for him. We usher him. We help him out. Who's we? The angels you create with that will. Habali tameh, someone who comes to defile themselves. We don't usher you like that. That you'll have to go your own course. We'll open the door for you. But you're going to have to take your, your way in. You're going to have to make your way in yourself. So, there's a lot to uh, to still uh, unpack in this topic. And I and like I mentioned earlier, I'm not, you know, I spent I, so many hours looking up and researching and connecting with this idea of willpower and it's simple but obviously not easy to make part of who we are yes definitely we want something we're going to have to work at it what type of work it doesn't necessitate that we're going to have to sweat and 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 we're going to have to will it we're going to have to will it and the will makes it happen so we're a little bit short here but i'll open up the floor for questions and if uh, if you have any questions or comments or stories you want to share i'm happy to listen um but i hope that we take this message of willpower and apply it to every area of life when you desire something when you really will it you'll have the success to make it happen Hashem should bless us all that we should find that success. We should have the will to only do good things. And then see that success, see that that path that opens up our way. And hopefully we'll be able to continue to emulate Hashem every day of our lives. Amen. Amen. All right. So you can unmute your microphones. There we go. So okay, any I, questions? I have a question. Sure. Uh, Pat is my Hi, name. Pat. Hi, Pat. Hey, hey, Hi. how are you? I'm good. I was wondering, where is that reference about the creating of the angels? That is such a beautiful, beautiful idea. Where does that come from? Okay, so it's the commentary on the Talmud in Tractate Makot 10b. And it is from the, in, in the back of the Talmud, there's the Chidushe Agadot, which is one of the commentaries on the Agadic teachings. And that's where it's brought down. Okay. So it's in the back of Tractate, um, Tractate Makot 10b. Okay. Yeah, I was, I was, 
I was blown away when I saw this. It's just like, unbelievable. It's, just unreal. it's unreal. Unreal. Like we, yeah. we really possess the power to create those angels for good and for, God forbid, the opposite. It's, it's an incredible thing. We have that power. All right, any other questions? Oh, thank you, Lisa. Welcome, welcome to the class. This is the first time I've had a chance. Uh, usually my class is on Mondays. So <laughs> we're taking a break for the summer. So I've been able to attend your class in person. Thank you. Beautiful. It's an, it's an honor to see you here. We hope to see you again in the future. All right. Any other questions? Now, I just had a comment, Rabbi. Yes, yes. I was just listening. Um, I was just reading a story. It was called Kitchen Table Wisdom. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard of that book, um, but no. one of the first, it's about a physician who um, shares stories about a lot of their patients. And one thing they've learned is about this innate life force that we have, which I feel is so uh, similar to um, your discussion of willpower tonight um, in that how people overcome illnesses that a lot of it, the people think they can't go through some terrible news that they get about an illness or surgery. And it's really amazing to see the strong life force that we have. Um, and I also believe that's given, you know, by Hashem, it's just part of our, our being as humans. And so when you also talk about uh, willpower, uh, I think it's connected to that. A hundred percent. And I, I've seen so many stories, like you're saying, of people who had uh, what the doctors thought was a terminal illness and they're giving them weeks or days and they're 10 years later they're they're better than ever without any sign of any illness and um the doctors always you know are asked about it and by the way there's a story like this we mentioned previously one of the classes from the early 1900s one of the great sages asked his doctor you know what's what do you see in medicine he said i see that it's all the will of the person if the person gives into his illness and says oh Look at me! I'm I'm almost di I'm almost dying, you know. I'm, I, and they give up. Versus, there are people who have that will. I have the will to live and to plow through this, and I'm not giving in. And they 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 miraculously get out of it. Again, it comes from that ability to create those vessels, create those angels, that you know pave pave the way for us. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you, Lisa. All right. Any other questions? Now, would you say is having the willpower for the like closeness with Hashem uh, enough to guide us? Or would you say yes, yes. So that's so that's the key ingredient. Like thank you for asking. The key ingredient in this will, my grandfather says, okay, this is my grandfather, I was so incredibly excited to see this today. Is what is that will? I will it. Okay, Hashem, help me. Hashem, help me. I want to be like you. I want to be close to you. Right? And therefore, I'll give you an example. Let's say you want the million dollars. What do you want it for? Let me hear. What are you going to do with that million dollars? Right? Oh, you're going to give charity. Right? You're going to be able to learn so much Torah because you don't have to worry about your livelihood. Oh, that's a very different type of will than I just want money. Right? That's a will. Hashem, I want to be close to you. And the barrier I have is the barrier of my livelihood. Otherwise, I would sit and learn Torah all day, whatever it may be. But the moment we're able to make our will, the, the desire to get closer to Hashem, that is the, the ticket. All right? All right, any other question? All right, my dear friends, have a terrific evening. Thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you next week. I think Thank we you. may be starting next week the negative traits. I think, I think I'm going to have to check the, the list, uh, but we might be, I think we're, we're due for three more classes in this series.
uh, where we're going to be talking. I think we're going to turn it over to the negative trades. Uh, we'll see um, next week, hopefully. I look forward to seeing everyone again. Erev Tov. Laila Tov. Laila Tov, Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Thank everybody. Thank you, Very everybody. helpful. Very helpful. Thank you.